returns to Legion Field today. While the heat of Alabama falls on Bill Curry, and tailback Bobby Humphrey knows his running must carry the Crimson Tide. For freshman quarterback Jeff Dunn, this will be the biggest moment of his life. And Bama supporters are hoping a win today will give their time, not LSU, a trip to the Sugar Bowl. War Eagle. Coach Pat Dye has heard that cry for years. But now the Auburn Tigers attack in the air and not on the ground. Quarterback Jeff Berger is the field general, while Kurt Crane and Andre Bruce hope to sack themselves an SEC title and a trip to the Sugar Bowl. So today, it is Alabama versus Auburn. Witness the last game of its kind in this storied rivalry, the last time that half of Legion Field's 75,000 plus seats will be allotted to Auburn and half to Alabama. Sometime in the near future, this will become a home and home rivalry. It may even see changes which will prevent it from being played every year. So today, for the 52nd time, Alabama and Auburn, their players, fans, and supporters meet to celebrate something special. You know, it's going to be talked about for years and years, and, you know, usually this is the game that, you know, most people remember, you know, how many games you played during the regular season, how many you win, or, and whatever happened during those games. You know, this, this game right here today is going to be the biggest game, and, and it's going to, uh, you know, be talked about forever and ever. You know, the people in Alabama live for this game, uh, 365 days a year. And as this last Southeastern Conference game of the year begins, here are the standings. Auburn on top with an inside track to the Sugar Bowl. LSU's only loss was to Alabama. A Crimson Tide upset today would force a decision between LSU and Alabama for the Sugar Bowl berth. Hello, I'm Jim Lampley, and here to watch this great game with me is Tim Brandt. And Tim, as if there weren't enough natural differences between the constituencies of these two schools, they are very different football teams as well. Tim, there's a definite contrast in styles. There's no question about that. Auburn has had a tough time running the football this year, ironically, and Alabama has been very inconsistent with the passing game. Auburn is favored, and well, they should be. This is one of the best defensive units in the country. As a matter of fact, the Tigers have not allowed an opposing running back to go for 100 yards this year. Alabama's Bobby Humphrey averages well over 100 yards per game. That is the major conflict. So Auburn must stop Bobby Humphrey. Alabama, on the other hand, must stop Auburn's passing game and Jeff Berger. Number one, Alabama has to force some turnovers. They also have to give Jeff Berger a lot of different looks defensively. I don't think they can confuse him, but they have to make him think. And watch for number 55 for Alabama. That's Derek Thomas. He has 15 sacks this year. But when you blitz, you have to play man-to-man -man defense. And they've got 5'11 cornerbacks out there. Lawyer Tillman, the All-American wide receiver for Auburn, is 6'4", and that's a mismatch. Indeed, Auburn appears physically superior and is favored in the game, but history shows in this rivalry anything can happen. As we mentioned, this is the 52nd meeting between Alabama and Auburn. The Crimson Tide leads the series, and it is one of college football's most storied battles. A look back now. The first Alabama-Auburn game was played in 1893, attended by 546 supporters of the two schools and won by Auburn. But in 1908, the series was suspended for 40 years, years in which anticipation built for the 1948 resumption of the rivalry, a 55 to nothing Alabama route. In 1967, Kenny Stabler scored the lone touchdown in what has been dubbed the Mud Bowl, a frustrating day for the Auburn Tigers as they had controlled most of the game. In 1972, Hunt, Bama, Punt. Bill Newton blocked two punts. David Langner returned them both for touchdowns. Auburn rallied in the fourth quarter, 17-16. In 1983, Bo Jackson had two long runs. This one, a 71-yard touchdown as Auburn beat Alabama for the second straight year. 1985, Van Tippen kicked the 52-yard field goal on the game's last play to steal a two-point Alabama victory. Last year, for the fifth straight time, the game was decided by four points or less. The hero, Lawyer Tillman, who scored on an improbable reverse to bring Auburn from behind. So the historical and emotional incentives are overwhelming. 
But there are Sugar Bowl implications riding here today as well. And for more on that, let's go down to field level and James Brown. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Standing with me is Jerry Romick, the president of the Sugar Bowl. And Jerry, the obvious scenario, if Auburn wins, they're in the Sugar Bowl. But what if Alabama wins, creating a co-sharing of the lead in the SEC? The criteria would be last appearance in the Sugar Bowl, among others, national rankings, among others, head-to-head -head appearance, among others. And, of course, I think the way the game is played today. So contrary to popular belief, if Alabama wins and they're tied with LSU, that doesn't mean that LSU is automatically in? No, no. We have a 17-man committee. We'll meet Sunday morning and decide who goes. All right, so there's an awful lot riding on this game, adding to the drama of the Iron Bowl. And we'll be back with more of our pregame activities after this word from your local station. Now moments away from the kickoff in Legion Field, and... On come the Crimson Tide of Alabama. Seven wins, three losses on the season. A big early season victory over Penn State, followed by a damaging loss to Florida, later losses to Memphis State and Notre Dame. But as you heard, they can still go to the Sugar Bowl with a big win today. Sports presents College Football. Live from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, it's the Alabama Crimson Tide versus the Auburn Tigers. Today's CFA game is sponsored by the Heartbeat of America, today's Chevrolet. Michelob Light, when the sun goes down, light up the night with Michelob Light. And by AT&T, the right choice. Turn to jam-packed Legion Field. I'm Jim Lapley with Tim Brandt. You look at weather conditions for today's game. Humidity 93%, and there is a chance of rain. Auburn won the coin toss and deferred the decision to the second half, Tim. Obviously, what they want to do, Jim, is get their defense on the field first. Their defensive unit, as we mentioned, one of the best in the country. They want to control Alabama early. Now, keep in mind, the last three years, the underdog has won in this ball game and alabama is the underdog the other thing is auburn is the home team in this ball game although they have not played a game in this field all year alabama has played all of its games here chris johnson will kick off for auburn Kerry good number 35 and bobby humphrey the all-american number 26 deep for alabama and this is good who will down it in the end zone so Alabama will start with the football from its 20-yard line. Red shirt freshman Jeff Dunn is the quarterback in the backfield with Dunn. Doug Allen brings plays in and out at fullback. Bobby Humphrey is the key to the Alabama offense. Marco Battle and Clay Whitehurst, the wide receivers. Whitehurst is the possession receiver on third and long for the Crimson Tide. On first down, Allen and Humphrey behind Dunn. Bruce is one of the keys to the Auburn defense, which has Benji Rowland at the middle guard. 
Roland is flanked by Ron Stallworth, who has replaced the injured Tracy Rucker and Nate Hill. Outside of them, the linebackers in the middle are Edward Phillips and Kurt Crane, the key to stopping the running game for Auburn. Alvin Mitchell and All-America Andre Bruce, who is the big play player on the Tiger defense. Second down and 11 for Alabama. third and long they'll be trying to throw against the defense which features Kevin Porter and Alvin Briggs at the corners and at the safeties Greg Staples the strong safety Carlo Cheatham free to roam from the weak safety position Jeff Dunn just a freshman Jim you can see right now he's starting to feel the pressure of this ball game he had Clay Whitehurst wide open on that last play but felt the pressure rushed it and threw it low question but the fact he jumped he was across the line of scrimmage before the snap so that will give Alabama another third down chance and Dunn continues to exhibit what might be interpreted as early game jitter. repeat third down Jeff Dunn 6'1 200 pound red shirt freshman strong arm mature guy named SEC player of the week in his first start that was against Tennessee now he was 15 and 0 as a high school starter he was 3 and 0 as a starter here at Alabama until he got hurt in the second quarter against Notre Dame heavily recruited player out of Greensboro North Carolina Humphrey in motion heavy run and Dunn just gets rid of the football David Rocker number 95 a freshman was the man who was right in Jeff Dunn's face as he tried to cut it loose. So Alabama will bring the punting unit onto the field. The punter is a junior, number five, Chris Moore. Duke Donaldson, number 29, deep to receive for Auburn. Alabama has a strong punting game. Second best in the SEC, but Auburn ranks second in punt return, so this should be interesting. Punt is very high. Donaldson backs away from it, goes out of bounds, and Auburn will have good field position as they'll start the offense just short of their own 40-yard line. Jeff Berger has had a tumultuous year, a lot of off-the-field problems. On field, he has been brilliant. Auburn has searched for a running game. Reggie Ware, mostly a blocker. Stacy Danley has come on to take over the tailback position in the second half of the season. Outstanding receiver. Lawyer Tillman, one of the best in the country, and as Tim told you, six feet, four inches tall. Duke Donaldson, also elusive on the other side. <laughs> Donaldson in motion. Berger will throw on first down. And the pass is complete underneath for a short gain. And we'll take a quick look at the Auburn offensive line, which has Hudson at center. And he is flanked by Stacy Dunn and Rodney Gardner. Outside of Gardner and Dunn, Eric Floyd starts at a tackle. You'll also see Jim Thompson on the left side, Stacy Searles on the other side, and the tight end, Walter Reeve, is called by his coach, Pat Dye, the best in the country. Second down, seven. And this is Danley who is dropped after a short game by Greg Gilbert of Alabama. The middle of the defensive line for Alabama finds Willie Wyatt at the nose guard. He is flanked by Tommy Cole and number 89, Philip Brown. Inside linebackers, Robert Stewart and the key man against the running game, number 56, Greg Gilbert. And the outside linebackers, the excellent Derek Thomas, who has 15 sacks this year, and co-captain Randy Rockwell. On third down and five, the pass to Donaldson is incomplete. A little bit underthrown, good coverage by cornerback Shannon Felder. And starting along with Felder, or starting along with Mangum is Gene Jelks. Felger was in as an extra defensive back on that play. Lee Osmond, the strong safety, is six feet, five inches tall. Kermit 
Kendrick roams from free safety. Punting situation now for Auburn. Brian Sulman, number one, will punt it away to Gene Jelks, who is deep for Alabama. Long kick. Jelks at the 10. Made immediately and dropped by Perry Reed, who is downfield on coverage. So now Alabama will start at its own 11-yard line after the 49-yard punt. As we bring you back to a cloudy day in Legion Field, Bill Curry's Alabama Crimson Tide are tied up with Auburn. Alabama, playing the schedule arranged years ago by Bear Bryant, has had the toughest go of it among the three top teams in the SEC. Included among Alabama's biggest wins, of course, a road victory at Baton Rouge over LSU. Now the Tide starts from its own 11-yard line with a new pair of wide receivers in the game and Bobby Humphrey getting the ball on first down. And there you see the Auburn defense against the run, led by defensive tackle Fernando Horn, which has always been a hallmark of Pat Dye's team. Jim, Pierre Good has just checked into the ballgame. That's Kerry Good's brother, and he is a flyer, the fastest guy on this team. As a matter of fact, he runs under a 4-340. He's had four catches this year, three were for touchdowns, and they also like to get him to the reverse. They've also brought in Angelo Stafford, replacing Clay Whitehurst on the other side of the field. Second and long, Auburn almost jumps, but doesn't. And riding inside, it's the fullback, Doug Allen, with the football in a short gain. And now it's going to be third and long for Jeff Dunn inside his own 15-yard line. It'll be interesting to see if Alabama throws here or goes with that reverse. I tell you what, Jim, I think you've got to throw. I think you've got to make them respect you right now. You've been inconsistent. You haven't been able to throw all year effectively. This is a ball club, Alabama, that's had six players complete passes this year. Now the Auburn fans try to crank up the noise to distract Dunn as he approaches third and nine. And he gives to Humphrey on the draw, and Humphrey gets a big play for Alabama to get them out of the shadow of their own goal line and pick up the second Crimson Tide first down of the game. Carlo Cheatham on the tackle, 17 yards for Bobby Humphrey. See, and they thought Pat Dye was thinking like I was, so all of a sudden, here they come now. They run this quick opener inside, and here comes Bobby Humphrey. This is the kind of guy, Jim, you don't like to analyze the style, you like to admire it. See his shifty feet, he's got good balance, low center of gravity, great speed, and the best thing about him, he's got outstanding vision. And you saw him get away from two good tacklers, Andre Bruce and Kevin Porter. Now on first down, the Tide gives inside the fullback, Bo Wright, number 40, who has come into the game to bring a play to Dunn. Wright, number 40, and Allen, 46, come in and out to bring plays to Jeff Dunn. Alabama has the best fullback combination in the country, bar none. And I said that last year, I still believe it. Wright and Allen are strong, they're great blockers, and they also can run the football. Terry Good is in the game now at tailback, replacing Humphrey. It is second down seven. And Good is wrapped up as he tries to hit up inside. Number 92, Ron Stallworth was there, along with inside linebacker Quentin Riggins, who's in the game momentarily replacing Kurt Crane. So both coaches going to the bench early. Alabama, obviously, as we expected, trying to establish that run with Humphrey. They have to do that. If they can't get that going, then they're in a lot of trouble because if they get in a situation where they have to pass a lot, then all of a sudden, it's all over. They can turn Andre Bruce loose. That die, three and three versus Alabama as a head coach at Auburn. He was an assistant coach under Bear Bryant for nine years. So this is his 16th visit to Legion Field for this game. Dunn completes it down the middle. Number 40 with the football is Allen. Quentin Riggins made the stop, but Allen has moved the chain again. So Alabama has its third first down of the game, and Dunn has a big completion. Watch how they utilize him now. We just talked about the fullback combination. Little play action, not a good fake to carry good. But see number 40 right up there at the top left of your screen? There's your fullback. He just kind of slid out. He's the Iceman. Little safety valve underneath. Makes the catch, gets the first down. Dunn fakes it to right, throws complete. Well, it is called incomplete now as Whitehurst was unable to get a foot down inbound. 
I'll tell you, it was a great effort by that guy, 82, though. Whitehurst, he's a reliable receiver. He's got a tough body, soft hands. He separates nicely from the defensive backs. Tried to keep his feet in, but the ball was over his right shoulder. Watch him now. He's what they call a possession receiver. Here it comes, and watch what he tries to do with his body here to keep his feet in. Matter of fact, I think he had him in, but he didn't have possession of the ball. That was the key. Exactly the ruling. He did not control the football with the foot in bounds. He did do a good job of ballet stepping along the sideline. So it is second and ten. Dunn is one of four in the air. Harry Good. And the once brilliant prospect, his career was marred by knee injuries, is stopped by Stallworth and Porter after a pickup of about three. Well, I was here, Jim, the night he hurt that knee. They were playing Boston College. Kerry Good had 297 yards total offense, just starting the third period against Boston College, and had his knee completely blown out. I had to do the injury report, one of the toughest things I've ever had to do. The doctor looked up at me and said, his career may be over, but here he is back. And Bill Curry chose him as the captain for today's game, saying that his leadership and his help to Bobby Humphrey have been exemplary. Now, on third down, down the middle to number 85, the tight end Howard Cross, and Cross tries to lean forward to move the chain, and I think he's about a yard short. Edward Phillips made the stop for Auburn. And we're going to see a measurement. Jim, they've been using Cross as a receiver a lot more this year. He came into this game with 15 catches. You know, he caught only five passes last year, none his freshman year. He's a mathematics major, and I guess if your favorite subject is math, you got to look at that thing and say two years plus five catches equals block. Well, you can see the distance right there as Bill Curry noodles out a fourth down decision, goes to the headset to talk upstairs. Tell you what, I think you've got to go for that right there. Everything's on the line right here. You want to play smart, but you want to go for it, too. Well, I don't know. If you punt it, you've got a chance to pin Auburn deep in what is frequently a game where field position decides matter. But early on, Jim, you want to establish dominance. You're already in their territory, so you won't be hurt that badly by field position. You're not in the four-down area yet, but go ahead and be aggressive. This is that kind of game. Hey, listen, they win this game, they go to the Sugar Bowl, possibly. You lose, you drop back into fourth place. They agree with you. I'm not sure I wouldn't kick the football myself. Fourth and inches for Alabama. Full house backfield. Number 40 it. is Bo Wright. I still think I might have kicked it. Well, I tell you what, he didn't get it. So everybody in the stadium is going to agree with you now and their second guest, Bill Curry. Keep in mind, there's a lot of pressure on Curry today, too. First year at Alabama, but he's 0-7 in his career against Pat Dye. Well, I don't think we can be so sure they didn't get it. It's all going to depend on the mark. They only needed about six inches. You see that light tuft of gray hair right on Curry's bangs. You imagine it's gotten just a little bit grayer this year. Referee Al Ford has signaled for the chain again. That is Bud Williams who is holding the football in place. Well, that's going to be close. gets the football back in good field position at its 47-yard line. So Alabama elected not to punt for a chance to pin Auburn deep early in the game, and consequently, the Tigers will be comfortable as they start the offense. What could have been a great big boost for Alabama now becomes a motivational factor for Auburn. The Tigers now know they stopped them on fourth and inches. It was that close. They didn't get it. Auburn now goes to the offense, and they'll have the football when we come back. Less than half the first quarter gone in Legion Field, and already we've had a moment of drama. This was fullback Bo Wright's attempt to get a first down on fourth and inches at the Auburn 47. That was the middle of the Auburn defensive line's response, and this was the response of Coach Bill Curry, who made the call. Come on, move it. I'm not sure we got it. And they didn't. And Tim, I'm telling you again, I kick that ball every time. Oh, every coach in America is saying that right now, Jim. That's the wise thing to do, you said. Hey, listen, I'm saying get that dominance right now. This is one of the best defenses in the country. Get that first down and push it back. Obviously, they didn't get it. It was a great stand there by Auburn. 
So Auburn now moving from his 47-yard line and with a little emotional lift, Reggie Ware, the fullback, takes it from Berger and moves it across midfield into Alabama territory. Robert Stewart made the stop for Alabama. Interesting to me, Tim, how much the two coaches have already gone to their benches. Alabama had the ball for 10 plays in that last possession. Humphrey carried it only twice. I'll tell you this, Jim, if they score on this, Pat, Pat Dye and everybody else is going to second-guess what Bill Curry did on that short yardage situation. I oh, know, Pat won't have to. He'll love it. He'll be the beneficiary. He'll keep his mouth shut. Big play from the middle of the Alabama defensive line as number 55, Derek Thomas, bolted across from his linebacker position and made the tackle for a loss. This is one of the best linebackers in America and probably hasn't gotten enough credit for his work. I agree with you. Derek Thomas is 6'4", 222 pounds. Some say he's as quick as Cornelius Bennett, although I don't believe that. But he's got 15 sacks for minus 116 yards. Look at the middle of the screen. He just didn't get blocked. Came through cleanly, got rid of any blockers around him, came through and made the tackle. Interesting that he is customarily an outside linebacker and that time lined up in the middle of the defense. So we talked about earlier, a lot of different looks for Berger. Third and nine, Berger throws to Lawyer Tillman, who makes a sensational grab but is upended without being able to plant inbounds. Gene Jelks made the play for Alabama and Jelks will go deep now to receive a punt. Jelks is one of the best athletes on this field. Certainly the best athlete for Alabama. Bottom of the screen, this is Tillman. Just a sideline out, and here comes Jelks, who has 4-4 four, four speed, just gets underneath. Now, if the official looks at that and says, well, if you hadn't hit him, he comes down in bounds, it's a catch. That's a judgment call, but he was out of bounds, clearly. Tillman picks up the low snap and lines it to Jelks, who makes a fair catch at the 12. So for the second consecutive time now, the Crimson Tide will start a possession deep in their own territory. 41-yard punt by Chris Schulman. No return for Jelk. 6.24 to go in the quarter, and we'll be back. As the Auburn War Eagle looks on, with 6.24 to go in the first quarter at Legion Field, Alabama and Auburn are scoreless. The Crimson Tide starting its third possession of the game from its 13-yard line. So far, Alabama has gained 51 yards of total offense and held Auburn to only five. Dunn going to throw from near his goal line. Releases over the middle and gets it to number 85, Howard Cross, and that was dangerous. There was a defender between Dunn and Cross. He just couldn't get his hands on the ball. If you are anticipating a close game, history will tell you you're probably right. Last five games in the series, all decided by four points or less. Last five games, Jim, a total of 12 points, as you mentioned. And over the last six years, these two teams have split. Seven-yard gain on the pass to cross. Ball now at the 19. Humphrey, hit sweep, good block. Out near the 30-yard line, another Alabama first down. Edward Phillips and Alvin Briggs knocked him out of bounds. Humphrey over 30 yards rushing in the game now on only five carries. And interestingly, Andre Bruce was on the bench for a couple of plays for Auburn. Now he comes back onto the field. Jim Bobby Humphrey gained over 7,000 yards as a high school player, and you can only speculate on how good he can become. He said Marcus Allen is the pro he likes to watch and, or emulate. You can see some of Marcus Allen's style in Humphrey. As new incentive this week, the first couple of All-America teams to come out did not list Humphrey on the first team. Gaston Green and Lorenzo White ahead of him. Now the fake reverse to Good. Humphrey cuts up inside and has a gain across the 30 to about the 32-yard line. Jim, that's twice now with Pierre Goode in the ball game. Last time, on that dangerous pass they threw to cross, they had Pierre Goode run the fly pattern, and that's what Auburn was expecting out of him. Now they run the reverse. They also expect that out of him, and they fake it to him. So pretty much a decoy to this point. Three-yard gain. It is second and seven. Humphrey now with six carries for 39 yards. Pitch sweep again. And this time, Craig Ogletree, number 94, getting a surprise start at linebacker today, was able to burst across and dump Humphrey for a loss. 
I'm saying pitch sweep because the action looks like an option, but you just know Dunn isn't going to keep the ball. Well, I tell you, Ogletree made a great play, too. Kept his shoulders squared, stayed down the line, strung the play out, used the sideline as an ally. Got him boxed in there and made a fine open field tackle. Now it is third down nine for Dunn. This one is picked off. Went down the middle one too many times. Kurt Crane, number 39, was there with Cross all the way, and that pass should not have been thrown. Surprised me because they were in a two-deep zone. Watch Crane this time. A two-deep zone for Auburn. He's got to get back to his hook area, then read anything that's coming around. Here's Cross, 85 on the right. Just takes it, slides with the eyes of the quarterback. The quarterback, Dunn, never looked him off. He went right to the football and made the interception. Crane, a transfer from Memphis State. Preseason All-America for Auburn, and he's had a big year. He got a Heisman Trophy vote. Yes, that's right. Stacy Danley on first down, sweeping to the right, has a pickup of about seven. Inside the Alabama 35-yard line before Thomas knocks him out of bounds. And I go back to that fourth and one. The refusal to punt on fourth and one created the field position advantage for Auburn, which now gives them the football at the Alabama 34. I can't argue that. You're absolutely right. It's been on this side of the field now since that play. Second down three. This time, the Alabama defense holds firm in the middle. That doesn't mean I relinquish my position, though. I still would have gone for it. <laughs> I know. But you say that you say they should have gone on fourth down to establish dominance. Auburn is the dominant team. Well, you also want to get the mindset of your team. You've got an offensive line there that has struggled a little bit. He's got them to the point now where they move the football in that first quarter. You want to get out there and make sure they can blow them out for one foot. That's all they need to do. They need it less than a foot. Bill Curry, who took over the head coaching reins at Alabama from his good friend, Ray Perkins, when Perkins went south to Tampa Bay. Third down two for Auburn. And the Tigers call timeout as apparently Berger didn't like the set of the defense when he came to the line of scrimmage. Well, I'll tell you something. Berger is a very disciplined quarterback. He takes whatever the defense gives him. He reads well, and Berger works with a lot of autonomy. He carries Jim three plays to the line of scrimmage and fits him into the weakness of the defense. So you're right. He came up. Those three plays didn't fit into what he was doing, didn't like the defense that Alabama was in, and called the timeout. Got a moment to remind you about CBS Sports' college football doubleheader tomorrow. Number three ranked Florida State closing out the regular season against Florida. Seminole's going to win that one, Tim? I like the Seminoles. I think it's the best football team in the country, bar none, right now. They run to the football. Obviously, they can't win the national championship, but I think they're the best team. Better than Oklahoma and yes, Miami. I, I do think that. Keep in mind, they had uh, uh, Miami on the ropes. If he had gone for the tie, he would have been in contention right now for the national championship. Well, Miami will get to state their case further in the second half of the doubleheader as they take on Notre Dame. Notre Dame, having had its national championship hopes dashed by the loss to Penn State, will now try to do the same thing to the Hurricanes. Who do you like in that one? Miami. Better talent? That's not necessarily who I like. That's who I think I'm going to win. Who's going to win the ball? That's game. what I mean. Yeah. I'm, I'm asking you who you think is going to win. I'm not asking for your personal allegiance here. <laughs> now Jeff Berger brings Auburn back to the line of scrimmage on third down two and gives inside to Reggie Ware. And Ware is at the 30 and just across, and that will be a first down for Auburn. Boy, and I'll tell you something. That's a big play for the Tigers because this is a team that has really lived by the run in years past. I can't remember when they didn't have a great running back with Brooks, Bo Jackson, Brett Fullwood. But they don't have that now, and they've really struggled with the running game. That time they loaded up with the power eye and just jammed it in there for the first. That was the first first down of the ball game for the Auburn offense. Stanley with the football. And you can sense at this moment, Tim, that Pat Dye would like to establish what has been so woefully lacking for Auburn much of the season, a running game. Well, and that's exactly what we were talking about earlier that Alabama was trying to do. Now, Stacy Danley's the guy. He came into this game as the Tigers' leading ball carrier. He had a healthy 4.8 yards per, uh, per carry. He's a redshirt freshman from Winston, Georgia, 19 years old. But he was putting the ball on the ground early in the season, so they pulled him out and benched him. Now he's holding on to it. He's doing pretty well. Time ticking away in the first quarter. On second and six, Danley is dropped by Derek 
Thomas, 55, and Greg Gilbert, 56. And Thomas is so quick across the line of scrimmage, you sometimes wonder if he has anticipated the snap count. I tell you what they have to work on. They, they say they got to work on discipline for this guy. They say he's out of control sometimes, but this time, look, he comes in square, reads the play, just comes down the line and makes it. You've got to keep that outside free if you're playing on the outside because you have containment, so you have to be very careful. That time he came in very well under control. Both Thomas and Gilbert are juniors. So Alabama can look forward to another year of their big play. On third down, Berger. The pass is intercepted. Intercepted. Number nine, Mike Smith with the pickoff for Alabama. And I have to think that was a bad read for Berger, who threw right into double coverage. You know, and it's unusual, too, because we talked about how smart he is in his decision-making on the field anyway. Quarterback efficiency, that's the mathematical way of saying he makes very few mistakes. But you can see here, he throws in his own coverage. There's two Alabama guys there. Nice play by Smith. He just stayed in his hip pocket, came in at the very last second and made the interception. Here comes Derek Thomas. Look at him. Strong inside. There's still no pressure on Berger. I don't know why he rushed the throw. He threw it off balance. That was Jelks who was there on the coverage along with Smith. And on first down, Bobby Humphrey has about four for Alabama before Edward Phillips is able to knock him out. Jim, let's watch now and see what Auburn's doing defensively. Because Bobby Humphrey's been hitting those corners, but he's been coming inside the contain man. So somewhere in there, they're forcing a blocker and pushing him out. They're coming underneath the contain man. A pursuit hadn't been able to catch up to Bobby Humphrey. Eight carries for 40 yards for Humphrey. So far, the teams have traded interceptions. Auburn has been unable to take advantage of a field position A throughout the first quarter. Second down, six. Humphrey by himself. And number three, Kevin Porter, would not allow him to get away. Yeah, but Jim, see, that time the play was made by the contain man on that side for Auburn. They, he shut down that time. It was Alvin Mitchell. They didn't push him out, so Humphrey couldn't get inside. He had outside containment and made the, made the play. As Humphrey ran away from the blocking, Alabama trying to influence Auburn away from the play, and Mitchell stayed home. Third down. They need about six for the first down. Battle and Whitehurst the receivers. Dunn gets away and now is dropped. And with time ticking away in the first quarter and 45 seconds now remaining, Dunn goes to the sideline as Alabama will once again be forced to punt it away. Number five, Chris Moore will await the snap and Duke Donaldson goes back deep to receive for Auburn. Donaldson standing at about his 31. Another very high kick for Moore, and deep. And Donaldson makes the fair catch at the 22-yard line. So, with 17 seconds remaining in the quarter, it's a 46-yard punt for Moore. No return, and Auburn will start the offense from all at the 22-yard line. Jim, let me take you back one play. Alabama's got third and three, I guess it is. Third and short. They try to run a pick with their tight end. They send cross out by Whitehurst. The two receivers, instead of picking off the defensive back, ran into each other. Dunn had nothing to do but tuck it away. Unforced error by Alabama. Donaldson gets away and gets out near the 35-yard line. Willie Wyatt reacting all the way over from his nose tackle position, makes the play for Alabama. But it's a 13-yard gain and a first down for Auburn. You see Donaldson coming to the sideline for an equipment adjustment as Freddie Wagand goes into the game to replace him. First time that number 14, Wagand, has been on the field. And what a player he might have been this year had it not been for a shoulder separation. A standing receiver. Duke Donaldson is only 5'10", 165. And that's the end of the first quarter in a scoreless football game between Alabama and Auburn. College football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station.
a cloudy day in Birmingham, Alabama, and the lights are on in Legion Field for the 52nd renewal of the rivalry between Alabama and Auburn. Legion Field has been the home to this game ever since the rivalry was resumed after a 40-year hiatus in 1948. Auburn starts with the football to begin the second quarter. First down at its 35-yard line. Berger throws to Reggie Ware, and he's got a lot of room. Across midfield to the 48-yard line of Alabama. Robert Stewart, inside linebacker, reacted back to make the stop for the tie, but it was an 18-yard gain for Berger and Auburn. I want you to watch Derek Thomas. He's in the middle. You can see him right to the right of your screen working on number 76. Just pushes him right back into Berger. Berger still is very disciplined, poised, controlled, waits, and then sets up this underneath little pattern, a little screen back here perfectly. On first down from the 38, Stacy Danley is rocked. And the man who got up underneath him was defensive end Tommy Cole, junior from Jasper, Alabama. No gain on the play. I mentioned that Legion Field has been home to this game for 40 years. Auburn administrators would like to see the game played in the loveliest village on the plains down in Auburn in 1989. That little dispute is going to be settled by lawyers, I can guarantee you that. On second and ten, Berger looks downfield. And the ball is dropped and goes out of bounds, so it is called a completed pass to Walter Reeves, the tight end, a gain of about two yards, and it rolled out of bounds, a piece of good fortune for Auburn. Greg Gilbert made the stop for Alabama. One of those points, Jim, we talked about Alabama's plus 17 in the giveaway-takeaway ratio. That means they force two turnovers a game that they get and then go to the offense. That time the ball was loose, that's what they wanted, but there was no pursuit there to pick it up. It is third down now. As Berger looks downfield. Complete to Donaldson. He is dropped short of the first down. Hermit Kendrick, the free safety, had coverage and the strong tackle against Donaldson. All right, now what do you do, coach? Do you go for it or do you kick? On fourth and two, I punt again. And Pat Dye agrees with me. <laughs> so you're playing the odds. Hey, I'm, I'm conservative. In a field position game, I play for good field position. That's what Auburn is doing right here. Schulman aiming for the sideline. Jelk lets it go. The ball bounces back to midfield and is downed at the seven-yard line. So Pat Dye gets out of that exactly what he wanted. Alabama, with freshman quarterback Jeff Dunn, will start at its own seven when we come back. We got 13.06 before halftime at Legion Field, and before Alabama starts with the ball, let's go down to James Brown. All right, Jim, you're looking at the projects just across the street from Legion Field where Bobby Humphrey, the great running back from Alabama, grew up, and it's always been a dream of his to play for Alabama here in Legion Field. As a matter of fact, as a high school student, he sold soft drinks in this stadium to get a better view of the players he wanted to be like. And you can bet that the Alabama staff is scouring the stands for other players with dreams and talent like Bobby Humphrey. Let's go back to Jim. Jim, he's now living his dream, and with the career he's had, one more year he'll be able to buy the Coke concession he can buy it. If he stays healthy. They move the ball out to the nine-yard line on the spot. And Jeff Dunn pitches to Bobby Humphrey. No check it. To carry Good, as Humphrey, as you saw, was on the sideline. Good back in the ball game has a pickup of four before Craig Ogletree makes the stop for Auburn. In both previous situations where the Crimson Tide has been pinned deep to start the offense, they have been able to get first downs on the ground. Right and Good are the setbacks. Behind Dunn on second and six. And breaking up through the middle this time is right. Carlo Cheatham makes the stop, but for the third consecutive time, starting in the shadow of its goalpost, Alabama is able to get a field position saving first down on the ground. There's a guy, Bo Wright. He was an inside linebacker his first year, Jim. Then they moved him to tailback, finally fullback. He just keeps getting bigger and stronger. He's a good blocker. That was a quick opener. Good blocking up front. They ran the linebackers out in the Auburn defense. So now the ball is at the 24-yard line.
Good again. Gets it across the 25 to about the 27. Edward Phillips made the stop. It will do a lot for the confidence of the younger Alabama team if they are able to run inside consistently against Auburn. You know, the only thing that surprises me thus far is how conservative or straightforward Alabama's been offensively. Now, this is a team which has been very successful doing things with mirrors. I mean, a lot of deception, multiple offense, reverses, running passes, but they're just up there, and the rules of this game are straight ahead, no fair dodging. Well, maybe they'll do that when they get to the other side of the field. On second down and eight, Dunn twirls and keeps it. And is able to wade across the 35 to about the 37. Didn't look very pretty running with the football, but he got 11 yards and a first down. Kirk Crane is the guy we've been talking about right here, number 39. Now watch the block on him that frees him up. An outstanding block made by Andy Anderson. And then Dunn just takes it up. He almost or could have pitched back to, to good there. Let's not ask for the moon. We have the stars. <laughs> Ball's at the 30. You're still being conservative. Yes, I am. For the freshman quarterback, I think I will be all day. Humphrey back in the game. Is hit, but able to rock forward for about three yards. Edward Phillips made the stop. You're telling me we're not dealing with a Jamil Holloway here. No, we're not. We're not dealing with a Charles Thompson. We're not dealing with a Jamel Holloway. We're dealing with somebody who has to be treated fairly carefully, I think. I'll tell you, he's impressive, though. You know, most freshmen don't know that ball is stuffed or pumped. This guy came in. He's very mature. He's reading defenses pretty well. He's been fairly composed. What he hasn't been able to do through the second half of the season is give Alabama a consistent passing attack. They were able to beat LSU without it. Oh. Good throw to Whitehurst and drop. Bad break. And you see Dunn clapping his hands. Okay, Clay, forget about it. You're the senior. I'm the freshman. We'll be okay anyway. <laughs> I'll tell you what, that play was set up nicely. They had the, all the play action going to the left side. He ran a little waggle to the white, right side. Whitehurst came free in the flat. Put the ball right there. You're right. He's a heck of an athlete, this kid. You know, he batted 304 on the baseball team. Hey, anybody from Greensboro, North Carolina, Tim. Third down, seven yards to go. Dunn drops straight back, good throw. And the first down into Auburn territory at the 45-yard line. Marco battle on the receiving end. We've got 10 minutes and four seconds remaining before halftime at Legion Field. I'm Jim Lapley with Tim Brandt. In a scoreless game between Auburn and Alabama, it has been Alabama which has been most successful moving the football so far. And right now, after a 15-yard gain on a pass from Dunn to Marco Battle, the Crimson Tide have a first down at the Auburn 45. That is Battle in motion. And this is the All-America running back, Bobby Humphrey, and Humphrey, who is off to a big start, has a pickup of about three before Crane and Riggins made the stop for Auburn. Alabama's offensive line right now is firing out. They're controlling that line of scrimmage. You're talking about guys like Jeff Bentley, Larry Rose, Roger Schultz, and Mike Zuga in the middle, Bill Condon, Chapman. These guys are firing out and trying to take control of that line of scrimmage right now. Second down, seven yards to go. And with the football, it's 46, Doug Allen, the senior fullback from Canton, Florida. Ron Stallworth made the stop for Auburn. So Alabama will face a third down in a game of field position so far. Alabama more successful moving the ball, largely on the legwork of Humphrey. The two teams traded interceptions. At one critical juncture, Alabama tried for a first down on fourth and short at the Auburn 47. Didn't get it, but Auburn wasn't able to take advantage of that field position edge. On third down here, Humphrey has the football and pounds forward towards the chain, but I think he's going to be short again. They yep. needed to get it to the 40. Look where the mark is. See the official at the top of your screen? He's got his foot right about the stomach of Bobby Humphrey. Quick opening trap play, though, was well developed. Are right, you get another shot? Fourth and one. This time the ball is at the 36. Watch Andre Bruce, 93. Again, he's coming from the outside, comes down the line of scrimmage, gets there. He saves the first down for Auburn. 
There's a look at Bruce. He played sensational games against Georgia Tech, a game he won single-handedly, in the words of Pat Dye. Also against Florida, Bill Curry wants to think about what to do now on fourth down and a yard. We'll be back. We bring you back to Legion Field with 7.56 to go in the first half of a scoreless game. And you can see here that Bill Curry called his entire offensive unit to the sideline during that timeout. There was not a white shirt out on the field as Curry, after having missed on a fourth and one earlier in the game, now elects to try for a 53-yard field goal. Philip Doyle will be the kicker, 13 of 19 on the year, one of four from outside 50 yards. Abney gets the hold down. Doyle's kick is no good. Hit the left upright and went down. So make Doyle one of five from outside 50 yards. And we'll take a look at how country boy Pat Dye reacted to that. A near miss. Kurt Crane, number 39, coming back out onto the field to greet the defenders as they came off. And now the Auburn offense will start from its 36-yard line. And again, a reversal for Alabama and a field position edge for Auburn. Alabama shows blitz. Here they come now. Backside. <laughs> 56, Gilbert, and 57, Randy Rockwell. First sack of the game for the Crimson Tide against Berger, and that was a big imperative for Alabama coming in. Boy, they were loading up, too. Look at the left hand of your screen. Here comes 56, Ed Gilbert. Just fights through a block. Then there's pressure coming from the front side as well. There was no secret about what they were doing. They showed man defense that means here comes rockwell 57 gilbert comes from the other side 56 just fought through their blocks showed blitz all the way and came and capitalized a big loss of 11 yards it's second and 21 as Berger now throws complete underneath the walter reeves but a very short gain and it will be third and a long way for auburn Jim, Alabama is mixing up its defenses very well right now. They went to that man, brought the blitz. That time, they went back to a two-deep zone, so they looked like they were taking away the deep side, the deep stuff, the deep middle for Berger when he came up to read it. So he went underneath, and of course they had that covered with the linebackers. And Berger carefully tutored by 1971 Auburn Heisman Trophy winner Pat Sullivan for read defenses has not read well so far today. This time he gets the screen off. And they are well short of the first down. In fact, a gain of only a yard with Stacey Danley on the receiving end. And the Alabama defense comes up with a big series. Well, I tell you what, though. First, it was Gilbert was there, and Willie Shepard came and filled. They got out to the flats quickly. Shulman goes back and stands inside his 15-yard line. Jelks deep for Auburn, or deep for Alabama, I should say. A lot of people coming. Derek Thomas with the block. Ball goes out of bounds, and Alabama will have it at the Auburn 10-yard line. He played in the shadow of Cornelius Bennett, one of the best outside linebackers ever to play college football. But Derek Thomas's statistics as a defender are better even than those of Bennett. 15 sacks. He had a block punt last year. Here he comes now. Just lays out completely. Left side of your screen. There he is. Didn't even have to lay out. He's that quick. He got up. The ball actually hit him in the chest. And then he's quick enough to regain his balance and go get it and take it out of bounds, Jim. What a player. First and goal for Alabama. Humphrey and Wright. This is Wright. Pounding down to the five-yard line. Edward Phillips made the stop for Auburn. Well, we talked about him at the beginning of the ball game. He is an impact player. He may not be the most dominating linebacker in the game, but he's an impact player. He's got great speed. They what a year for linebackers in college football. Outstanding year. And you remember a year when there were more great linebackers in the sport? No, uh, you know, I can't. Especially in that outside position. Dude comes in motion. 
Walker's in front of Humphrey is closed up quickly by Auburn. Kurt Crane was the man who filled the hole at about the four, and now a big third down decision for Curry and Alabama. Right now, I'd go to a play action. Put some pressure on the corners. At least that way, you've got the option to run it or pass it. Run first, pass if he's open. But at least put the pressure on the corners. Bo Wright brings the play in from the Alabama sideline. Auburn shifting to the bottom side of your screen. Good goes in motion to the top. That's where Alabama goes. Humphrey is dropped at about the one. Number 35, Carlo Cheatham, was the first man up to slow Humphrey down. Kevin Porter got his face in Humphrey's chest and rode him down. Another big decision for Curry. The ball is right at the one-yard line. Double tight end for Alabama. No kicking unit coming onto the field. They're going to go. They also brought in Doug, Doug Allen at, at fullback. He's the better blocker of the two fullbacks. 46. Got them both in. They've got Allen and Wright in there. Both fullbacks. There was nobody fooled for Auburn either. I see Howard Cross got out there in the end zone, and he was just surrounded. So Auburn dodges a bullet. Four minutes, six seconds left before halftime. We'll be back. We're still scoreless in Birmingham after this big turn of events a moment ago. Here are the two guys that are key, Jim. This is Kirk Crane. Over here is golf. They're going to apply some pressure. Now, Alabama shows all the motion this way. It's a little waggle, and then all of a sudden, the quarterback, Dunn's going to come out, and he's going to roll and look for his tight end, who's right here. That's Cross. But Cross stumbles coming out, never gets clear back here, and by the time Dunn is free to throw it, of course, everything's covered. See the motion now coming to the left? Now, here comes the pressure from 98. That's golf. Golf was taken out nicely. But look at Cross at the bottom of your screen, 85. He's surrounded. And the ball was thrown high. Good coverage down there by Kevin Porter. He's the best defensive back they've got, number three. So Alabama failed to score after the blocked punt. But the trouble isn't all over for Auburn, which now starts the offense at its own one-yard line. Flag down, and the Alabama players are saying that they were induced. Dead ball foul is a false start on the offense. Still first down. The referee is Al Ford. They moved the ball half the distance, so now it's inside the one. Reggie Ware gets about a yard. Just a little bit of breathing room for Berger. Berger is 7 of 10 throwing in the game, but has not been able to go downfield. And in all likelihood, won't try it here. The entire Alabama defense now looking over for the defensive signals. They better get them quickly because Auburn's already at the line of scrimmage. The football was Harry Mose, number 25, freshman from Lake Wales, and he got only a couple. Quickly, let's take a look at what's coming up in the NFL this Sunday. Two of the league's most intense rivalries. Most of you will see the Packers meet the Bears. Then the Giants take on the Redskins in the second half of the doubleheader. Some of you will see Tampa Bay against the Los Angeles Rams. And it all starts, of course, with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern time. That's Sunday on CBS Sports. Third down for Auburn. Berger in his end zone. Good release. The catch by Dan Lee. The ball at the 12-yard line. And a first down for Auburn. Big play by Berger. And an equally big play by the freshman running back, Stacy Danley. I'll tell you what made that play work, Jim. 
The lineman for Auburn that time came out, took wide splits. The wide receivers went way outside, and what they did by doing that was string out and, and soften up the defense. Look at the wide splits here by the lineman. That's not what they did just moments ago. Now the receivers are split out 20 yards, which spreads out the defense and lets things open up for Dunn, I mean for uh, Berger. And they brought the chain all the way across the field to measure. I'm not entirely certain why. It was clear that the ball had been marked out at the 12, and that was an easy first down for Auburn. So Berger is now 8 of 11 in the game. And that was the best throw he's made. A little draw play action this time. And Danley is met and dropped after a very short game. Derek Thomas again with the hit for Alabama. He's been active, hasn't he? Derek Thomas. Junior out of Miami, Florida. When he was a freshman, you could see the amazing talent. But he was a little bit over-eager then. Just as capable of coming up with the big roughing the passer penalty or the big offside penalty as he was of coming up with the big play. That's what I was talking about earlier. You know, they really had to get him to settle down and be more disciplined, stay at home. Berger wants to go downfield deep, and Lawyer Tillman is there. The flag is down, and we'll have to wait to see if that's offensive interference, but I think it probably was a push by Gene Jelks. It's the mismatch we were talking about earlier. Gene Jelks, 5'11", Lawyer Tillman, 6'4". There is a flag, and if anything, it's going to be against Gene Jelks. He was just trying to hold on, maybe even face guarding. I can't tell, but it is going to be against Jelks. Lawyer Tillman has been double teamed all year. But he's done his damage anyway. Play action. Berger looks right the whole time. Didn't look off at all. But see, look at Jelks, 22. He's looking all the time at Lawyer Tillman. Never looked back for the ball. Here, Jeff Berger, the quarterback. This is what it looks like now. Ground level. Little play action. And he locks on his receiver, Tillman, right away. And puts it high and lets the 6'4 receiver run under it because he knows Jelks is only 5'11". Plus the fact Jelks was beaten. And the call is a personal foul against Jelks. So 15 yards are added to the catch. And that moves the ball all the way to the Alabama 26-yard line. So you have the 44-yard pass from Berger to Tillman. Then the 15-yard penalty. All together, Auburn goes 59 yards on the play. And now they're in business at the tied 26. Drop. Pick up of only about a yard. Derek Thomas again, there to get underneath Danley. Can't do that. If you're beating on a play, you're beating on a play. You got to put it in your back pocket and forget about it. But you can't get carried away and get another 15 yards tagged onto it for personal foul. You got to contain yourself. Got to show some class out there. That just hurts your ball club. It's got to be awfully frustrating for a superb athlete like Jelks to stay with Tillman and just not be able to stop him from making the catch. And now Alabama wants a timeout for the defense to collect itself. So with second down nine for Auburn, the ball at the Alabama 25, scoreless game, we'll be back. As we bring you back to Legion Field, we've got a minute and 25 seconds left before halftime in a scoreless game. I'm Jim Lampley with Tim Brandt. And Tim, it's been such a war of nerves so far that every play between now and the end of the half is going to be magnified in importance. Absolutely, and every mistake is magnified, like the one Chelsea just made. You know, he just lost his composure for a second, but that's the mismatch that we were talking about. That's what they want to do. They want to get Tillman out there. And Alabama's been blitzing, and when you blitz, you have to go man-to-man. -man. And Tillman had been quiet up to that point. He, like Derek Thomas, though, is a big play player who can break up a game like this. And there's Derek Thomas again. Dumping Berger beyond the 35-yard line with a flag already down. And I can tell you what it is. Wait till you see the way Thomas came through there. They had to hold him. They had to hold him to keep him out of there. See, that's what Thomas is saying. He's looking over at the defense and saying, hey, coach, come on, it's holding. They were keeping me out of there. So now, just as quickly as they walk yardage off against Alabama, now they'll move Auburn back. With another year still to go in his career, He's already got more sacks than Cornelius Bennett had. In fact, he had as many sacks this year as Bennett had in his whole career. Can you imagine coming into this game with 15 sacks? Well, you can make it 17 now. That's right. 
Uh, they're talking a long time down here. Maybe it's not as clear cut as we thought, or I thought. Oh, I was agreeing with you. You can say we. <laughs> this man's face never changes, you know. His does. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Pat Dye. Boy, he's had some great success. East Carolina, Wyoming. I don't think he's ever been as home, or felt as home, as much as he does at Auburn. And holding against the offense, it was a live ball foul, and it declined. We had a dead ball foul, a purple foul against Alabama. It's that first down. All right, Derek Thomas now. They've been moving him all around. See him right here, 55. Now watch this. See, he's already by. They try to give him a rip move. The right arm is all around him. Well, I think, see, Stacey Daniel just let him go. Now, where's the personal foul? That's it. The late hit right there. The personal foul against Brown. Now, that's the second personal foul in three plays against Alabama. It has given Auburn a first down on a play on which Berger was sacked for a 12-yard loss. That's got to drive Bill Curry mildly crazy at this point. Danley breaks through a hole, and he's down to the five-yard line. Jelks and Kendrick made the touchdown saving tackle, but Auburn will have first and goal. Well, I tell you, Danley's made a difference in this running game. 20 carries, team high 73 yards against Georgia. Brings it back to the right side, gets inside the contain man. Now it's, see this, he wants to take him on one-on-one. -on -one. Doesn't want to make any more cuts. Goes right after Jelks and the safety and takes him on, butts his head rather than making a cut to the right or the left. And now Curry calls for another timeout and brings the whole defense over. In the meantime, let's take a look at these two fine schools. For a large university with a diversity of majors and curricula, that Auburn tends to still be a school where close relationships are possible. If you start off with students who are intellectually good and intellectually curious, and yet it's human enough and warm enough and personal enough so that students who want help and seek help get help. And that's just very unusual. Pat Dye talks to Pat Sullivan with 58 seconds remaining in the second quarter. At the conclusion of today's CBS Sports College Football broadcast, we'll select a Chevrolet Most Valuable Player of the Game from each team. Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of each of the two schools whom you just saw profiled moments ago. Meanwhile, we've got 58 seconds remaining in the second quarter. And as Pat Dye confers with Sullivan, Auburn has first down, goal to go at the five-yard line. Harry Mose, touchdown! Freshman this time last year 
He was playing in a high school stadium against his rival in Lake Wales. Now he's here on national television in front of 76,000. Legion Field scores the first touchdown. That's a little unnerving, but he looked bold on that run. Knapp with the short approach kicks it high and short. And this is Humphrey. And Humphrey's got some room to make a big play. Finally stopped at the 37-yard line. He was just one step away from getting outside on the right, and he might have gone a long way. Domingo Anderson, a sophomore safety man from Warner Robins, Georgia, made the saving tackle for Auburn. Curry talks to the official on the sideline, no doubt pointing out an uncalled penalty. I'm not saying be conservative here, but I'm telling you, 44 seconds left is critical time. Alabama cannot afford to make a mistake here. Well, the composure has cracked just a little bit in the last two minutes. Those two personal foul calls were extremely damaging. On first down, Curry does remain conservative as the fullback, Doug Allen, gets about five up the middle. Clock is being allowed to run. Let's quickly go down to James Brown. All right, Jim, coming up for you on a Prudential College Football Report at halftime, we'll take a look at the regional voting in the Heisman Trophy Award to be announced next week right here on CBS. We'll also have a profile in courage on Bob Waters and some late news on Earl Bruce, the fire coach at Ohio State. Back to you, Jim. Looking forward to that, James. Second down three. And Alabama again gives to the fullback inside. And a few boos are heard in Legion Field. Nate Hill made the tackle. Pat Dye turns and walks to the locker room. And the countenance of Bill Curry remains calm and consistent. Yeah, but he's saying, hey, where's Auburn going? We're still playing. We got four seconds left. There's timeout. We called it. And Auburn's halfway to the locker room. Remember college football tomorrow on CBS Sports, Florida State versus Florida. And you'll see Emmett Smith in that game. If you haven't seen him yet, you're going to want to check it out. Notre Dame against Miami. It begins at 12 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, this is the first time that the Fighting Irish had played against the Hurricanes since the debacle of two years ago in the Orange Bowl when the Hurricanes mashed Notre Dame in Jerry Faust's last game. And there were some that thought Jimmy Johnson ran the score up. But, no. you know, Lou Holtz was not there. That was Jerry Faust, as you mentioned. And uh, Lou Holtz comes in. Lou Holtz is an outstanding coach. I'm not sure that's going to be the predominant thing on their mind as they come in. This is just a well-schooled, fundamentally sound Notre Dame football team. They're going to do just what they do best. Well, there'll be a lot of players who played in that game returning to the field. The Notre Dame players remembering ruefully how badly they were beaten. The Miami players remembering, perhaps with too much comfort, how easy it was to beat Notre Dame. Four seconds left in the half. Spread formation for Alabama. Three wide receivers to the bottom of your screen. Don drops back. Kurt Crane. Humphrey with the tackle. That's a pretty good lick by Humphrey, too. And that's the end of the first half. With the score, Auburn 7, Alabama nothing. James Brown will be back with the College Football Report after this message and a word from your local station. Former college basketball player Jim Martin here at Auburn, we believe that athletics makes a person strong, that study makes a person wise, and that character makes a person great. These are the ideas that I found in the athletic program at Auburn when I arrived on a scholarship more than 30 years ago. And these are the principles and ideals that we incorporate in our athletic program today. These are the principles that have meant so much to me in my life. The preceding brought to you by the College Football Association. We are back live at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, where Auburn leads Alabama 7-0 on a touchdown scored in the final minute of play in the first half, set up by two personal foul calls against Alabama. Alabama held Auburn to 20 yards rushing in the first half, Tim, but unfortunately five of them came on that touchdown play. It was well executed, not only by the Auburn offense, but by Harry Mose. Let's take a look at that play, and we'll take you back now, and you'll see Harry Mose is right here to the right of the screen. Well, my chalk isn't working here. All right, he's at the right of the screen. And you'll see a block, first of all, 
Anthony Smith, 94, comes through. There's a great move. Now you'll watch 84, the tight end, Lee Mark Sellers, make a key block here. Not a big block, just enough to make the outside guy, Lee Osmond, the rover, take the inside route and stay away from Harry Mose as he tap danced into the end zone. You got to work on the chalkboard here a little bit. I wish our audience could have seen you with that magic wand there, frantically pressing well, it. Well, I was pushing it hard. <laughs> Harry Mose, no, Scott Bolton is deep for Alabama to take the kickoff for the second half. And you'll recall at the beginning of the game, Auburn won the toss and deferred the decision until this point. So Auburn now receives the football. And Jeff Berger comes back on field to lead the Tigers as they start at their 24-yard line, leading 7-0. Jim, at the beginning of the ball game, we talked about the success that Alabama had had running the ball, but unable to pass. Well, they've got 110 yards rushing offense. Auburn has not been able to run, but they've had success passing. Berger's got 96 yards in the air. And Alabama was able to hold Lawyer Tillman to only one catch in the first half, but it was for 44 yards, followed by a personal foul. And it was a big one. Helped set up the touchdown. On first down here, Stacy Danley, one of the two freshman tailbacks who have been effective in limited bursts so far for Auburn, gets a few before Willie Wyatt, the nose tackle of Alabama, knocks him down. Call it a gain of four. It will be second down six. Let's keep an eye on that Alabama defense. See what they do. See how they mix things up now and try to put pressure on Berger. Pullback, Reggie Ware, close to a first down, and he may have it. Wyatt again making the tackle for Alabama. And I'm sure that part of the discussion at halftime for Auburn was aimed at trying to establish a little bit more consistent ground attack. You're right. Now, Alabama came out in a two-deep zone, and there was a nice play that time by Willie Wyatt, who had to fight off the block at the nose position, and then almost lunged to make that tackle. It still wasn't in time. So Auburn is able to establish a first down on the ground to begin the second half, something they couldn't easily do at the beginning. Duke Donaldson now on the little hitch, and a good tackle out there in the flat by number 59, George Bethune. Bethune replacing Rockwell to start the second half. Here's a summary of what's happened in the game. Auburn with 126 total yards outgained by Alabama in the first half. Derek Thomas blocked a punt for Alabama and set the tide up with first and goal at the nine, but Auburn stopped Alabama at the one and then went 99 yards on the strength of the 44-yard pass to Tillman, two big 15-yard penalties against Alabama. And here is Danley breaking into the secondary and fumbling the ball, and Alabama has it. If, in fact, they're going to be given credit for the recovery, one official says yes. That's usually all it takes, unless he can be talked out of it. The ball's at the 43-yard line of Alabama, and this is a very big discussion right now. Jelks being pulled out of there. He created one of the personal foul calls in the first half when he kicked the ball. This time, Alabama gets a break. They average two turnovers a game. We said at the outset they've got to get those turnovers today. Danley upset. Osment, the strong safety, was the man who fell on it for Bama. All right, now the ground can't cause a fumble in any league. You can see that it's loose. And Osmond gets it right there. There's no question about it. The ball was out before he ever hit the ground. Good call. First down, Bama at the 43-yard line. You saw Curry show more emotion than he did at any time in the first half. Dunn pitches to Humphrey, and Humphrey gets a few on the short side of the field. Alvin Briggs drove him out of bounds. Another look at Curry's reaction to the fumble recovery. He's a competitor. We sat in his office. We talked at great length about this. He wants to get out there and play himself. And what a great player he was. Played in three Super Bowls. First with the Vince Lombardi coach Packers, and then with the Baltimore Colts. Head coach at Georgia Tech for seven years, during which time he was 0-7 against Auburn. Second down, Humphrey again. Gets outside. But then is dropped out of bounds on a good play by Carlo Cheatham, the free safety. Cheatham may be the only Auburn defender who could have gotten there quickly enough to close off the sideline on Humphrey. You're exactly right about that. And the thing that got him there was the angle that he took. Instead of coming flat straight down the line, he gave himself a little cushion. Took a good pursuit angle where he could cut him off and then pushed him out of bounds. So now it is third down, four yards to go for Dunn and the Crimson Tide.
Draw play is smelled out and stopped for a loss. Menzi Rowland, the nose guard, stayed home all the way, and Humphrey had nowhere to go. So Alabama is unable to capitalize on the break. But if Moore can produce a good punt here, then the Tide may at least get a field position advantage out of the fumble. There are the numbers on Moore. Donaldson deep to receive for Auburn. Going to run it back. Oh, Flag yeah. down as Donaldson is dropped on a solid tackle at the 23-yard line. 35-yard punt, 6-yard return. Butch Lewis, number 61, was the man who made the hit. Kurt Crane comes out to listen to what the call might be. And the Alabama players were pointing toward the Auburn goal line. Had a clip, during the run back. So with the help of that penalty, Alabama does get a little bit of a field position edge. Auburn will start with the ball at its own chance when we come back. If you were stranded on an island, what kind of car would you want? On this island, you'd want the legendary reliability of Toyota Camry. You'd want responsive 16-valve power and front-wheel drive to ease your way through savage traffic in very civilized room and comfort. And, of course, you'd want Camry style just to impress the natives. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? Toyota. When you look through a Minolta Maxim, any picture you can imagine is possible. Minolta, the leader in SLR technology with more autofocus lenses, more autofocus zooms to help you capture more of the action. You and Minolta Maxim bring creativity to life. Maxim, the ultimate system. Only from the mind of Minolta. Devices energizer lasts longer than any other battery. New energizer. Bye. CBS Sports presents college football. Today's CFA game is sponsored by your Toyota dealer and the 88 Toyota Camry. Toyota quality. Who could ask for anything more? The energizer battery. Good times never lasted longer. And by U.S. Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. Not a shred of sunshine all day in Legion Field. And we Just take a look back at this punt return. There's the illegal block on Crane at the top of the screen, but watch this hit by Lorenzo Ward, 18, coming up right here. Boom! Now that's impact. See the head? The head immediately ducks, and he goes backwards. Lorenzo Ward's just a freshman. And as a result of the illegal block, the ball goes back to the 10-yard line. So Auburn starts from there, and on first down, Reggie Ware has a gain of about six before Greg Gilbert met him and brought him down for Alabama. I'm Jim Lampley along with Tim Brandt. You're watching CBS Sports telecast of Auburn, Alabama from Legion Field where it is 7-0 Auburn, 12-12 to go in the third quarter. Last game of its kind in one of college football's most storied series. On second down four, Manley has a pickup of three. I say last gain of its kind because this is the last time that the 75,808 tickets for access to Legion Field have been divided 37,904 to one side and 37,904 to the other. Next year when they play here, with Alabama being designated as the home team, Auburn will have only 10,900 tickets. Where they play the following year is in dispute. Auburn says they'll play down at their place. Alabama says they'll play here. On third down, Reggie Ware picks up a first down for the Tigers. So Auburn is able to dig out a little bit of space as they move it from their 10 to their 21. Gene Jelks 
and George Bethune made the stop for Alabama. You see, Auburn is making all the critical plays right now, the plays that they have to make. Alabama has had chances and has not made the plays when it counted. They had a fourth and in inches, did not make it. They had a fourth and goal at the one and ran a play action, threw the ball over Howard Cross's head, did not make it. So they are not making the critical plays, and they have not capitalized on the turnover. First down now for Berger and the Tigers, and Berger drops back. Gets away from Thomas. Can't get away from the second man, number 51, Tommy Cole. Again, though, it was Derek Thomas who created havoc for the Auburn offense. Third sack of the day for Alabama. Cole and Thomas. Now, what do you think Jeff Berger's watching? When he gets back there, he's got his head on a swivel. Where's number 55? Where's number 55? Here he comes. Inside take now. He chases him out of there, forces him on the side, and here comes Cole. Cole grabs him from behind and takes him down. But it was Derek Thomas, 55, that made that play because he got Berger out of the pocket. Berger never has to look too far to find 55. <laughs> About a second and a half, and he's going to be in his face. Thomas says his favorite number is 12. He wants to be near it all day. Draw play. Danley. Couldn't get away from number nine out there, Mike Smith. Smith, the freshman out of Gainesville, Florida. You see more and more schools now going to the south, especially in Florida, to get their skilled positions. So many kids come out of there that can run, catch. They've got that those quick flex muscles where they can get out in skill positions from under the shadow of Galen Hall's Florida Gator machine came Mike Smith. He made that stop after a three-yard pickup. Well, no, a seven-yard pickup. It had been second and 14. It's now third and seven. They try to draw again. Derek Thomas has Danley. Danley tries to make it to the chain, and he got very close. And Danley showed real strength there as he carried Derek Thomas for about five yards. You watch Thomas here. He lost the leverage in his legs. Boom, he'll make the hit here. All right, now he'll skate down that line. Now he's in pursuit. Here he makes the contact, but see, he doesn't have, he's got to tuck that tail. His legs are extended, doesn't have the leverage. While the running back, Danley still does, and drove him and got the first down. And Stacy Danley, who now has 14 carries for 71 yards in the game, picks up a first down for Auburn. And for the first time all day, the sun breaks through the clouds and sheds a little light, ironically, on the Alabama sideline. Ironic because it is Auburn which leads 7-0 and which has now picked up two first downs since starting this drive from its own 10-yard line. That's a small war eagle. That's actually an argument eagle. <laughs> That's the one you carry into the tavern with you. Harry Mose gets a short gain on first down. You look at Pat Dye. It is more than mildly disconcerting to a lot of Alabama fans and supporters that Pat Dye sounds and sometimes even looks like Bear Bryant. Neither Ray Perkins nor Bill Curry are in that category. No question about it. You close your eyes, you think Bear's there with you. The rhythm of the speech is the same. Certainly the hard-nosed toughness is similar. Second down, six. Where? First down. Finally knocked out of bounds across midfield at the Alabama 48. 17-yard gain for the fullback, Reggie Ware. Boy, missed tackles, missed tackles, missed tackles. You've got to wrap your arms. Gene Jokes had him and let him get away. It almost looks now like the Alabama defense is getting tired. They're not coming up, wrapping the arms, trying to get that leverage back under your legs where all the impact comes from, where all the power comes from, and putting them down on their backs. Well, indeed, if you just look at the numbers on the roster, Auburn is bigger and stronger. Reggie Ware weighs 236 pounds. And Alabama does indeed look a little bit worn down right now. Danley. Slow developing play. You know what, Jim? That's a good point. And Alabama readily admits that they really aren't any physical match for Aul Auburn. They came in saying that. But how do you explain a guy like Moe's, the running back, taking it around that left side, or Danley, rather? He's, he weighs 200 pounds. You got a guy like Derek Thomas coming up who's 225, 230, and he's still the running back wins the contest. That's not physical. That's just getting the leverage under you and just taking it and a little desire to get to that first down marker. 
Second down, eight. Auburn staying on the ground. And Vincent Harris carrying the ball for the first time is stopped by Tommy Cole. So Cole, who had the sack a few plays ago, makes a tackle after a short game by Harris, and now it will be third down, seven yards to go. Plenty of time to go in the ball game, but you get the feeling that it might be more than just a little important to Alabama to stop Auburn on this play. See, the time left in the ball game is not the key. The time of possession is the key. Auburn's had the ball a long time, and the Alabama defense is tired. They need a rest. Here comes Thomas. And Berger overthrows. <laughs> and then he looks at his feet almost to say, I know you're there, Derek. So Alabama gets a key stop of Auburn on third down. It will be fourth down and seven. The ball at the 45-yard line. Brian Schulman will be standing at his 40. High, long kick. Jelks runs away from it. It goes all the way to the back line. Alabama, after the 45-yard punt, will start with the football at its own 20-yard line. Seven minutes to go in the third, trailing seven zip. We're not a company, but outstanding people come to us every day. People who want to make a contribution to a team and do work that really counts. People eager to see new places, do the unusual, and find the unusual. People who become your friends for life. People just like you. We're not a company. We're your country. We're the Navy, the Air Force, the Marines, the Army. We're the Armed Forces. It's a great place to start. It's the right for you at the right time. It's the silver bullet that will stay so fine as a new way. To go to town, the silver bullet won't slow you down. So come on, the cruise light is the right There's a tendency in business to focus on the big picture. But at Cigna, we realize the big picture is actually made up of millions of smaller pictures. Which is why our companies provide an array of insurance, health care, employee benefits, and financial services to millions of individuals and thousands of businesses. One person at a time. Cigna. Personalized service to business around the world. We bring you back in the third quarter, and there are the facts of the game. If Auburn wins this game, it goes to the Sugar Bowl. But if Alabama wins, the Sugar Bowl must choose between the Tide and LSU. And Bill Curry says that it ought to be his team, not LSU. I can't face my players if we're fortunate enough to beat Auburn, and we've already beaten LSU on their home field, and say, okay, fellas, uh, we, we're the co-champs, and we beat LSU, but uh, really, uh, we shouldn't be going to the Sugar Bowl. I can't say that. That isn't true, in, in my opinion. So those are Curry's feelings, and of course, you can understand his position. I agree with him. Hey, listen, if it's head-to-head -head competition, and you go down and beat LSU in Baton Rouge, and your co-champions, LSU was there that last year, as part of the criteria. LSU has been ranked higher all year. Alabama first and 10 from the 20. Done. Able to release the ball, and the incompletion saves Alabama some yardage. Flag down. And the flag was thrown back at the area where Dunn went out of bounds after releasing the ball. So we'll wait to see if it's a personal foul call against Auburn. If it is, it's David Rocker, and it'd be a big break. 6'4", 260-pound freshman. In a moment, I'll give you the rest of the LSU argument. It is a roughing the passer call. It'll give Alabama 15 yards, and here's another look. Here's 95. There's the hit. All right, now the ball's gone. He's got to release him right now. Instead, he just throws him to the ground. Good call. So now it is first down Alabama from the 35. 
And the give is to the fullback, Bo Wright inside, and Wright has a gain of about six. Here's the rest of the LSU argument. They've been ranked higher all year, and uh, they have lost only one game, that one to Alabama. Alabama has lost three, and included among those three losses were a crushing defeat by Notre Dame, 37 to six, and the embarrassment of a loss to Memphis State. So LSU's argument would be that the Sugar Bowl committee shouldn't invite a team which has lost to Memphis State as opposed to a team which has been in the top ten all year. I'm neutral myself. <laughs> Three yards to go for the first down. Bobby Humphrey has it as he gets across the 45 to about the 47. Greg Staples made the stop for Auburn. And suddenly, after that personal foul call against Auburn, Alabama looks a little more alive. I still say, though, if you're going to lose a football game, you've got to lose it early in the year. You know, if you just changed, of course, if and but, if and buts were candy and nuts, oh, what a party we'd have. But if they just changed Notre Dame and Penn State on their schedule, that means they had won five straight SEC games and beaten Penn State. But instead, they're coming in here with that loss at Notre Dame, their worst regular season loss in 30 years, and that doesn't sit well with the Sugar Bowl folks. Done. Can't find anybody. Finally releases, and it's incomplete. Intended receiver was Howard Cross, the tight end, and he dropped it as he was being ridden out of bounds. The other players in this scenario are the Gator Bowl and the Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Incidentally, it's now time to present this week's Toyota Leadership Award to team players who've been singled out by their school's coaching and faculty staff for outstanding performance in the areas of team contributions, academics, and citizenship. They are Kerry Good from Alabama and Wynn Lyle from Auburn. I'll tell you more about them in a moment. Right now, it's second down 10 for Alabama at its 47-yard line. Humphrey runs right into the middle of the Auburn defense and has a gain of only a couple to about midfield. Ron Stallworth made the tackle for Auburn. Kerry Good of Alabama is a senior general management major from Town Creek, Alabama. And Wynn Lyle of Auburn is a sophomore pre-med major from the little town of Auburn. Toyota donates a check in the amount of $1,000 to each of the two schools' general scholarship funds. And those are good choices. You're particularly heartened by the choice of Kerry Good because he's been a great citizen during his years at Alabama. On third down six, Dunn is in trouble and is down at his own 40-yard line. Kurt Crane was there early. First Auburn sack of the day, Nate Hill and Ron Stallworth creating the pressure from their sides of the defensive line. And so Moore gets ready to kick it away again for Alabama. Donaldson at his 20, takes it at the 18 on the run and is dropped on a fine open field tackle by number 23, Todd Richardson of Alabama. 42-yard punt, four-yard return. Auburn leading Alabama 7-0. We'll have it at its 22. We come back. With the leaves turning outside Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, Auburn leads 7-0. Still a long way to go in the second half. Down to James Brown. All right, Jim. Now, although Auburn's nickname is Tigers, their mascot happens to be this war eagle, which just happens to be nicknamed Tigers. Now, I don't think anybody will question why a bird will be nicknamed Tigers when you consider that with each one of its talons, it can apply 450 pounds per square inch of pressure. And that compares with an average man's grip of about 20 pounds per square inch. And, of course, Auburn is hoping to put the big squeeze on Alabama. Let's go back upstairs to Jim. Well, Tim, you've met that bird, uh, haven't you? <laughs> I didn't get that close to it. <laughs> Nor, in fact, did I. James is a more courageous sort. On first down for Auburn, a big play by Great number 92, play by Darryl Darryl Winstone. Winstone. Great yeah. play. Boy, that's when you just stay low, you penetrate, you shoot the gap and make the tackle. Boy, he was on the ground. That took great arm strength because he was completely laid out. And he's the backup nose guard, so you hope that, or you expect, I would think, that the Alabama coaches saw the same thing we saw in the last Auburn drive, which was that the tied defense appeared to be wearing down just a little bit. Second down, nine yards to go. Stacy Danley. 
Tries to cut him inside and has only a couple. Number 59, George Bethune held his ground. Sunday, CBS Sports presents a doubleheader featuring two of the NFL's most intense rivalries. First, the black and blue divisional battle as the Packers meet the Bears. Most of you will see that. The rest of you will see the regional games listed there. You've got to check your local listings to see which one. Then Giants take on Redskins, and the Skins with strong memories of last season's NFC Championship game when the Giants kept them from going to the Super Bowl. Now the first place Skins have a big chance for revenge. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Eastern Time Sunday. Berger on third down gets out of trouble momentarily and then is dragged down. Derek Thomas again, one of the men there to tackle Berger. It's a big play because Alabama was a little bit mixed up in the secondary. Their coverage was shaky. They didn't know what they were doing. Watch Derek Thomas now. Here he comes, 55 again. He's just sneaking in there. He's playing hide and seek. Now he has to get rid of the blocker and come out and make the tackle. And Auburn lines up in a hurry to punt it away. Schulman from inside his 10 gets this one off. But it's a low kick. And Jelk brings it back to about the 47 before a wallop is put on him by Elton Billingsley, number 47. 32-yard punt, two-yard return. Alabama with outstanding field position. 247 remaining in the third quarter. You wonder when and if. Alabama will begin to open it up a little bit on offense. They almost have to. They've had success with Humphrey, but their passing has been underneath. It's been not successful. Now they've got to look deep every once in a while. They've got to loosen this thing up. I'll tell you what, Auburn's not doing anything fancy defensively. They're playing basic vanilla zone. They are good in the game for Alabama. Sometimes that means that the tide is ready to go for the big play. Green, Humphrey. Not much there. Auburn was able to force him back to the inside, and then Ogletree, number 94, led the group that closed it up. Through the years, in the 1890s, Auburn dominated the rivalry pretty even up to 1907 when they stopped playing and didn't play again until 1948. It was pretty even through 59. Of course, Auburn had the national championship team in 57. Then Alabama dominated in the 60s and 70s. They've been even in the 80s. Dude on second down is dropped for a loss. Ogletree again, number 94. And the sophomore out of Barnesville, Georgia, got a surprise start today ahead of Alvin Mitchell, an outside linebacker. And he has come up big for Pat Dye. It's the only way to play the option. You had Craig Ogletree, the outside linebacker, taking the pitch man. You had Nate Hill, the nose tower, the defensive tackle, taking the quarterback. So all, everything was covered that time. They left nothing uncovered. Third down, 10 for Alabama. Battle and Whitehurst are the wide receivers, both to the top of the screen. Good in motion to the bottom. Good protection for Dunn. Now he breaks out. Threw it into a crowd. Punting team back on for the tie. Well, they've had good field position on both of the last two possessions. Sooner or later, they're going to have to take advantage or else they'll be headed to the Hall of Fame Bowl in Tampa. You want to know what this game means? I remember seeing Chris Moore as a freshman had a broken left leg, had his left leg in a cast. That's his plant foot on the punt and still punted against Auburn. Donaldson makes the fair catch back at the 15-yard line. A 39-yard punt. And now Auburn will start the offense from its 15, trailing 7-0. And Auburn, which has been more successful running the ball in the second half than they were in the first half, can, I think, continue to play conservatively on offense, Tim, if Alabama is unable to produce a big play. I agree with you. And right now, Auburn offensively is controlling the line of scrimmage. The Alabama defense is tired. They've been stringing them out. They've been running them from sideline to sideline. And right now, Auburn's got the advantage. Auburn plays fast, comes out in a hurry on first down, and Stacey Danley has a pickup of about five before Tommy Cole can make the stop for Alabama. So that'll bring it out to about the 20. It'll be second down and five to go. 17 carries, 81 yards for Danley, and now Danley has more yards in the ball game than does his opposite number, Bobby Humphrey of Alabama. On second down, Reggie Ware is met and stopped after a gain of only about a yard. 
Number 59, Bethune, and number 56, Gilbert, were there. And you saw Bethune pumping his arm in the air, trying to arouse the emotions of his teammates. Clock ticking, 26 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Auburn will get one more playoff before the period ends. Now it is third down and four yards to go. The Tigers are four for 11 on third downs in the game. Berger, complete. First down yardage and out of bounds at the 29. Second catch of the game for Lawyer Tillman. Boy, that play was set up nicely, too. It looked like it was going to be a down and out, and it was, but they had a pick out there. They could rub the defensive back off. Once they rubbed him off with a pick, he was wide open. Watch this now. Here's Berger. No question where he's going. See his head? He's looking to the right already. And the ball's right there. But the play was made by 14 as Freddie Wagan, who had to rub off the defensive back and got him a singleton on Tillman. Derek Thomas again, along with number 92, Daryl Whetstone, the backup nose guard. And on that play, the third period comes to a close. Fifth sack of the game for Alabama. And you can just isolate number 55 on every play because he is the killer force on the Bama defense. 6'2", 222 pounds. I'm, I'm surprised. Look at this. They're using three guys trying to pick him up the backs. Not even a chance. He's so quick. He's got those great feet just tap danced around them and that's the end of the third quarter with the score Auburn 7 Alabama nothing college football on CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station sports presents college football today's CFA game is sponsored by Cigna a leader in insurance health care employee benefits and financial services Toyota setting the standard for quality and value and by Wrangler jeans made in the USA As we bring you back live to Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama, the fourth quarter begins in the 52nd meeting between the Auburn Tigers and the Alabama Crimson Tide. Auburn with the football at its own 20-yard line. Draw play. And number 32, Stacy Danley, breaks out to about the 35. And across it to the 36-yard line before Mike Smith, the safety man, made the stop for Alabama. That play came on second and 19. And now Auburn will face third down and three. 18 carries, 97 yards now for Danley, a freshman from Winston, Georgia, who has been brilliant in the second half. He goes out. He's not banged up. It's an equipment situation. He needs to get his chin strap squared away. Boy, he's made the difference in the running game. 19 years old. The athlete he mostly admires, Eric Dickerson. If that's the case, what do you think his major is? Finance. He's smart. Yeah. <laughs> Third down three. Reggie Ware. Close. Dragged down right at about the chain. This will be a critical measurement for Alabama, which needs to get the ball back and get something going, if only to maintain a little confidence. The second half has been almost all Auburn, though there has been no scoring. It was 7-0 at halftime. It's 7-0 now. Pat Dye relaxed as he sips from a cup on the sideline. Bill Curry, you saw, shuffling his feet. Moves the nose of the football past the chain, and it's another Auburn first down. So Auburn, after the sack of Berger, is able to come back and get the first down on two running plays. The big one, the 16-yarder by Danley. The ball is at the 39 of Auburn. Where? All the way to the 40-yard line, Mike Smith makes the stop, flag down on the play. 21-yard pickup for Ware. In the first half, the Alabama defense didn't bend much. Now they are. But this is a big break for the tie. against the offense, just six men on the line of scrimmage. Still first down. Illegal procedure, but there were only six men on the line of scrimmage. That's why they're bringing it back. That's a major break for Alabama. 
Ware, 6'2", 236-pounder, played behind Tommy Agee last year. He was the designated short yardage man, but the pressure's right there on Jeff Berger. Now it is first and 15. And this time, Ware is met and dropped in the middle of the line. Three-yard gain on the play. Meanwhile, there is a dramatic development on the far sideline behind the Alabama bench. At the beginning of the season, the starting quarterback for Alabama was a junior former walk-on named David Smith. He broke his collarbone September 26 against Vanderbilt. He was not expected to play again this season. But this week, Alabama coaches, to their surprise, were told by doctors that Smith might be able to play today. And with Mike Dunn, or Jeff Dunn, I should say, having struggled in the second half, Smith has now begun to warm up. Berger on second down throws complete to Duke Donaldson. But the Duke is out of bounds at the 44, and he'll be short of the first down by about five. So you wonder now if on the next Alabama possession we might not see David Smith in the game and a little bit less conservative Alabama offense. Coming into this ball game, I was sure that we'd see David Smith. They were talking about him the way that Coach Curry talked about him in his office yesterday and the day before. He is amazed that Smith came back with that collarbone injury and is throwing very well. You saw Jeff Dunn there slapping his hand. On third down, Berger throws complete to Donaldson. And again, Auburn overcomes a penalty and converts for a first down. See, we're talking about David Smith coming into the ball game. First thing Alabama's got to do is get the ball back. And right now, they're not doing that. Jeff Berger is taking this defense. He's taking what they're giving him. Now, remember, we told you, they give him a lot of autonomy. He carries three plays up to the line of scrimmage with him. Makes a decision up there, sees where the weakness of the defense is, audibilizes, and goes with it. Very big pickup of a first down with the third down pass to Donaldson. There are the numbers on Berger. He is a more accurate passer than was Heisman Trophy winner Pat Sullivan during his day at Auburn. On first down, Danley gets a couple. And before the game, this is what Jeff Berger had to say about momentum in the fourth quarter. Uh, you know, I want to have the momentum going into the fourth quarter. That's something that um, the winning team of, uh, in the past four or five years, the one that had the momentum going into the fourth quarter, she usually come out on top. He's got it now, 12 minutes exactly remaining in the ball game. They're in Alabama territory, Jim, and they've got that momentum. Second down, seven yards to go. Number 21 with his second carry of the day is Vincent Harris. Philip Brown made the stop for Alabama, and now again Auburn faces a big third down situation. And more to the point, the Alabama defense has a chance to force a punt, and it becomes more and more important for the Tide to take advantage of that chance. And do not forget that Alabama has already blocked one punt this afternoon. But they got to stop Auburn here first. Everybody's coming. Tillman across the 40 to the 39-yard line. The chain was right at the 40 by about a half a yard. Tillman got the first down. His third catch of the day, and every one of them has been a big one. Talk about 85 if you want to. That play was made by Jeff Berger. He came up to the line. He read the blitz just like we did up here. When you're in blitz, what happens? Man coverage. Who do you go to? The guy that's 6'4 and is an out. I'm telling you, the guy's Barishnikov in cleats. Just get it out there. He'll make the catch. So they got it out there. He got the first down. Wendell Davis of LSU was a first-team All-America player. Auburn supporters will insist to you that Tillman is a better receiver than Wendell Davis. Danley has only a couple. Clock continues to run past 11 minutes. Gut check time now. Somebody's got to take a hold of that defense. It's got to be Derek Thomas or one of those leaders. Get him in that huddle and say, hey, look, strap it on. We've got 10 minutes left in this ball game. They score here, it's over. We're in fourth place. We stop them here, we get the ball back, and we've got all kinds of time to do things. Second down eight. Draw. Danley stumbles. He had a big hole. He would have gone for the first down if he had not temporarily lost his footing. As it is, he stopped about a yard short. 
Six-yard pickup. Willie Shepard made the tackle. 21 carries for 110 yards for Stacey Danley. Third down and a long one. Oh, what a hit. Reggie Ware didn't get it. Did not get it. Now, if Auburn were to go for a field goal here, it would be a 47-yard try. Bethune, Derek Thomas, Gilbert, the linebackers, watch. The line does their job, stacks it up. Then look, they go over the top, the linebackers fill, meet the ball carrier in the air, and take him back. All three linebackers were there that time. Outstanding job going up over the top. And as Auburn lined up in field goal kicking formation, Pat Dye said, no, let's give it another look. That's the situation. We'll be back. It's 7-0 Auburn with 9.13 to go. And moments ago, Alabama got a big stop of Auburn on third and one. Here's the key play now. These guys in here have to clog everything up. They've just got a submarine. But the play's made right here by Gilbert. Watch him. He's got to anticipate and come over the pileup to make the hit. See the pileup down there? The submarine by the lineman. Now here comes Gilbert. Anticipates. Gups over, up and over and stops the ball carrier right there. Actually makes him go backwards. And because of that big play, now... Auburn lines up to try a 47-yard field goal. Win Lyle is the kicker. The hold is good. The kick is up. Wide to the right. Alabama dodges a bullet. Nine minutes, seven seconds left. The tied offense comes onto the field, and the quarterback will be... We're still waiting to see. There is no quarterback yes, on the it field is. It's yet. David Smith it is coming David on right Smith. now. The quarterback will be David Smith. Bill Curry watching the kick go wide. We're still in the game, guys. David Smith, as Jim mentioned, a junior. He's from Gadsden, Alabama. He was the backup to Mike Shula last year. A walk-on. Playing for the first time in two months and one day. Humphrey. 12 yard gain. Kevin Porter made the stop for Auburn. Smith's very presence on the field suddenly seems to lift Alabama. Tomorrow, CBS Sports continues its holiday weekend lineup of great football action with another college football set. This time, doubleheader. Noon Eastern Time, third rank Florida State against Florida. And then Notre Dame against Miami. Last week, Notre Dame lost its national championship hopes. They'll try to eliminate Miami tomorrow. CBS Sports continues with college football. First down, Alabama. Ball at the 43-yard line. Smith. To the fullback for about five. Bo Wright. And again, Alabama suddenly playing with more vigor. Of course, they got a long rest. Auburn held the ball for more than seven minutes on that possession. Yeah, but you made a key point. He doesn't even have to come in and complete a pass right now. He has just energized this team by his presence. What a story. Broke his collarbone in prep school. Came in as a walk-on here at Alabama. He won a job. Backed up Mike Shula. Breaks his collarbone after upsetting Penn State this year. They said he wouldn't be back. Here he is. What an inspiration. down four. Crane was also there. So we anticipate that we're going to see Smith's first pass. Now here's the key. The collarbone that he broke this time was not the same one he broke when he was in prep school. It is his right collarbone but he's left-handed just like Mike Shula was. He won the starting quarterback job against an array of high school All-Americans. were much bigger names. Jeff Dunn, Billy Ray, Vince Sutton. Those three among the most heavily recruited quarterbacks in the country over the past few years. Nobody cared much about David Smith. Third down four. Plenty of room if he wants to run it. 
He throws short. A little indecisiveness. Marco battled the intended receiver. If Smith had tucked it down immediately, I think he'd have gotten to the chain. It looked like he was directing traffic. He seemed to be composed enough to tell people where to go. He was actually pointing to his receivers to break away and separate from the defensive backs. So it's fourth down four. They bring it back to the right hash mark, and Moore will try to pin Auburn deep. High kick. Auburn bounce. Downed at about the 20. Um. Auburn is seven minutes and 18 seconds away from another trip to New Orleans. Well, hello again as we bring you back live to Legion Field. We've got seven minutes, 18 seconds to go. And Auburn has played very confidently, effectively, almost arrogantly in the second half of the 7-0 lead. Confidently, I don't know if arrogantly. I'll tell you this, Jeff Berger is a curator of clocks. And he now knows that he's got 7.18 left, so he just wants to eat that clock up. Alabama, on the other hand, has to make that big play. we got to get Derek Thomas or somebody in there, they're saying, and make that big play. we got to stop him right now, get that ball back, and give David Smith another shot. If you're Alabama, do you look to blitz a little bit here? Well, they've been doing that. I think they've been mixing their defenses up pretty well. They've held Auburn to seven points. On first down, Berger pitches back. The number 25, number 25, Harry Mose, and the freshman who has scored the game's only touchdown has a pickup of four. It'll be second down six. Mose got the only TD in the game on a five-yard run in the last minute of the first half. Nice job by Bethune that time on the outside. Also, he got support, run support from uh, Kermit Kendrick. They came up, they strung it out, they met the blocker, and they made the tackle. On second down... Auburn lines up in a tight formation, announcing to Alabama that they're going to run, and they get only a couple. Except I was surprised that time. I was watching Gilbert, and Gilbert ran himself out of the play. Just before the snap, he seemed to see something and ran to the left. His left. The play came behind him. Nevertheless, the defense closed up and held for a gain of only a yard, and now it will be third down five. Berger, 14 of 18 in the game. He's been brilliant in the second half. First down. Stacy Danley. Across the 30 to the 35. Big play for Auburn. Gene Jelks made the tackle for Alabama. But the Tigers get a chance to run a little more clock. 22 carries, 118 yards for Danley, and he's slow getting up. Again, Jim, there was confusion in the Alabama defense. Auburn was already up and out of the huddle and over the ball, and the defensive players for Alabama were still looking over to the sidelines for the defensive call. They had their hands in the air. That's been the problem for Alabama in the second half, and again, Berger has been at the heart of that. As you said, the curator of the clock. No question but the fact I was saying the clock up on the scoreboard didn't have as much impact in this ball game as the possession of, of the football. First down now from the 35. Tillman in motion. Danley with a hole. Pick up of about five. If you're Alabama at this point, Tim, I think you've got to gamble a little bit and try to close up against the running game. Just take the chance that Auburn isn't going to try to throw deep to Tillman in these circumstances. Well, I'll tell you another thing you have to do, too, and that's start tackling the football. You've got to get that football loose. can do nothing but watch and wait. You know, they've been playing aggressively defensively. They're playing games up front. They've been blitzing the linebackers. Reggie Ware is dropped. Good play at the corner for Alabama. Thomas was there, along with number 95, Thomas Ram. See, Jim, there's nothing fancy about that. It's just power versus power right now. And right now, Auburn's the more physical football team. Alabama shuffling along the defensive front, trying to keep a little energy in the ball game. At times in the second half, the defense has looked tired because of that time of possession statistic we showed you a moment ago. Another third down situation. Alabama's got to capitalize on these if they want a shot. The chain is at the 45.
incomplete, but a flag down. Obviously a mix-up. Two receivers in the same place. Berger wanted to get it to Tillman, I think. The way John Magnum, though, re reacted to the official, it's going to be pass interference against him. And if so, it would be the third penalty to have critically wounded the Crimson Tide in this game. The 99-yard drive to the game's only touchdown was fueled by two personal foul calls against Bama. Magnum's not a great speed guy, but he is the best cover guy on the corner for Alabama. He may be called, though, for pass interference, and that's what it looks like it's going to be. Well, if it's a five-yard penalty, it will give Auburn a first down. Holding on the defense. Instead, it is a big one, and it takes it to the 49-yard line of Alabama. 10-yard penalty. Pat Dye sees the chains move for his team. Four minutes, 24 seconds to go. Auburn making no secret now of its desire to run inside and keep the clock moving. Sunday, CBS Sports presents a doubleheader featuring two of the NFL's intense rivalries. Most of you will see Green Bay and Chicago. The rest of you will see some of those regional matchups there. Where are you going this weekend, Tim? Got a great football game. New Orleans and Pittsburgh. Both teams very much in the hunt, still in the playoff picture. Saints have been playing brilliantly lately. I'll be doing the Tampa Bay versus the Rams game, but most of you across the country will see the Giants and the Redskins in the second half of this doubleheader. It all starts with the NFL today at 12.30 Sunday. Second down, breaking through is Danley. Another big play by the freshman tailback, and it'll be a first down Auburn at the Alabama 35. Kermit Kendrick made the stop for the Crimson Tide. The pom-pons that are waving in this stadium right now are the blue and orange ones. Pat Dye thinks he's going back to the Sugar Bowl. John Hutchin, watch 66. He's the guy that makes this play work right at center. Watch the block. Gets his hands extended. See? Keeps the body out. He's also holding. Actually, a pretty good takedown that time. That was a tackle. He just put his arms behind the legs of Willie Wyatt and tackled him. On second down, or on first down, Reggie Ware gets a couple. Thomas and Shepard made the stop for Alabama. Clock runs, and when they start with the ball again, there will be fewer than three minutes to go in the game. See, for Hudson now, that's a great play. The coaches will see that and say, hey, what a block. You sprung him, got the big first down. But in essence, he got away with a hold. Bill Curry hitches up his pants and tries to exhort his troops to stop the Auburn thrust. Second down, five. Danley again. All the way down to the 12-yard line. Alabama beginning to look a little disheartened. Shannon Felder knocked him out of bounds. What a game he's had. for Stacy Danley. Reggie Ware cuts up inside and moves it past the 10-yard line to the Alabama 9. Alabama's got all its timeouts left. They want one now. So Bill Curry will talk to his staff now see if he can find something left in Alabama's bag of defensive tricks. We'll be back. With two minutes and nine seconds remaining in Legion Field, Auburn leads 7-0 and knocks on the door again. And if you're one of this state's million and a half or so Auburn fans, you'll be comforted to know that the once itinerant coach, Pat Dye, has settled down in Auburn, Alabama. 
He's bought a 1,025-acre farm in a town called Realtown, 20 miles from Auburn, and he says that he's staying for the duration in the loveliest village. On second down with the ball at the Alabama 9, Stacy Danley hammers away for his 26th carry of the game and gets it down to the 6th. Jim, the great coaches have the ability to adapt to their personnel, adapt to the changing times. Here's a guy you're looking at him, Pat Dye. He went from the wishbone to the wishbone option. He went to the eye power when he had Brett Fullwood and Bo Jackson. And then he went to the eye pass, which they're in now. They run the pass. They had more passing yardage than running yardage coming into this game. That guy right there adapted to his personnel and utilized Jeff Berger to the max. He admits that it was not the most comfortable move in the world for him to go to a passing offense. But he did it because he had the players to do it. Reggie Ware is stopped on third down. So now it is fourth down, and Alabama uses another timeout to stop the clock with 1.23 to go. There is still a chance for the Tide if they can somehow avert a field goal or a touchdown by Auburn here. We'll be back. That die stands with longtime Auburn assistant coach Paul Davis on the sideline. Davis was an institution as the defensive coordinator under Shook Jordan, and Dye brought him back onto the staff to reestablish the tradition of the Auburn defense. Now a field goal try coming up for Wynn Lyle. And this will be a short one, 23 yards. He missed earlier from 47. The kick is up. It's 10-0 Auburn. for the Auburn Tigers. In Pat Dye's seventh year at the helm, they are hoping to go to the Sugar Bowl for the second time. to the 37-yard line from where Alabama will begin in now desperate straights. It's going to be interesting to see what kind of defense Auburn goes to. They've been so successful all day, it'd be a shame now to go to a prevent defense where they loosen up and try to bring everything underneath. It's when they go into those prevent defenses that teams start connecting and moving the football. They don't need that now. Just play regular defense. And they are. This will be the 16th offensive play of the second half for Alabama. Auburn has run 45 plays. David Smith throws in the flat to the fullback, Doug Allen, and Allen is knocked out of bounds after a gain of about four. Pretty smart that time by Auburn. They came up, lined up just like they were coming into a regular defense and then loosened up. And the War Eagle signs start to ride around Legion Field on their way to New Orleans. Now, we're a couple of Southern boys, Tim. Shall we try to rip off one good War Eagle here? <laughs> Shall we wait till the end of the game, or do you want to do it now? I'd say I've seen business, business ventures split, families broken up because of these games. I think you and I are going to be able to remain friends. On second down, Smith throws down the middle. Knocked loose. Ball game. Do it. Ball game. It's over. Disheartening blow to Alabama. Nate Hill knocked it loose. Kurt Crane, no, Kurt Crane knocked it loose. Nate Hill on the recovery. It was number 82, Clay Whitehurst, who was hit, and he's still down on the field. And you hope now that Whitehurst is not hurt. Because he's a gutty guy and class player. First catch. 
to the game for Whitehurst. Alabama just didn't have the ball in the oh. second half. But for these guys, it's another championship ring. Here's Whitehurst right here, the possession receiver. They were in trouble anyway because it was in the middle of the field. It would have stopped the or kept the clock running with one minute left. Boy, what a hit. I'm telling you, that was Kurt Crane just put the lumber to him and knocked it loose. And for the guys in blue, it's another championship and a trip to New Orleans. And they'll always remember that on the last occasion on which this stadium was half filled with Alabama people and half filled with Auburn people, it was the Auburn group who walked away happy. For Alabama, there's not a guy on that bench that has a championship ring. This would have been the first, and they just watched it go away. Well, it's been an up-and-down season for Bill Curry's team. Some tremendous wins. The big one over Tennessee, another over Penn State. Some terribly disappointing losses. They played with heart and courage today, but they were physically beaten in the second half. I agree with you. It's been a terribly inconsistent team. They came to beat Penn State, lost to Florida the very next week. They, uh, they were upset by Memphis State, 13-10, but came back and beat Tennessee. And there's a former Bear Bryant assistant who runs his record against Alabama to four and three. Tomorrow, CBS Sports continues its lineup of college football action with a doubleheader. Noon Eastern time, third-ranked Florida State taking on Emmett Smith and the Florida Gators. Then Notre Dame, which had its national championship hopes ended by Penn State last week, will try to end Miami's national championship hopes and in the eyes of many Irish supporters, get a measure of revenge for the embarrassment of two years ago when it takes on Miami. Great college football doubleheader Saturday here on CBS Sports. It all starts at noon Eastern time. In the second half of the game, Tim, Alabama had the ball for six minutes, 57 seconds. And if Auburn keeps it the rest of the way, the Tigers will have had it for 23 minutes and three seconds. That's the point we tried to make early. With seven minutes left in the third quarter, we were looking at the scoreboard. That was not the time that was a factor. The time of possession was it. And this is a team that came in with a questionable running game. I think you've got to give a lot of credit to Berger for his brilliant technicianship in the second half. But you've got to give credit to a freshman running back named Stacy Danley, who has come out of the woodwork in the second half of the season to finally make Auburn supporters forget about what Bo Jackson and Brent Fullwood used to do for them. Stacy Danley's a pretty good story, too. He had his confidence crushed early in the year. Came in, fumbled a couple of times, and was benched. And there was no running game at all for Auburn. Finally, they said, hey, look, we've got to generate some kind of offense. Let's give Stacy another shot. And number 32 right there came back and accepted the challenge and hasn't put it on the ground since. Tonight on CBS, you can watch Beauty and the Beast, followed by Dallas and Falcon Crest. Plenty of drama there. There has been considerable drama here in Legion Field today. Now, finally, Clay Whitehurst gets up, but he looks very woozy. And we're not going to hazard any kind of a guess as to what might have happened to Clay. We're just going to say, let's hope that he's okay. Pat Dye, you know with this 9-1-1 one one record, he moved ahead of Georgia coach Vince Dooley and into eighth place on the scroll of the nation's winningest active coaches in terms of winning percentage. Pat Dye, head coach at East Carolina, then at Wyoming. After one year at Wyoming, he was offered the head job at Auburn. He called Bear Bryant his former boss at Alabama, and said, should I take the Auburn job? And Bear said, no, I wouldn't do that if I were you, because if you take it, I'm going to whoop you. And Pat said, well, Bear, that may be true, but whoever follows you, I'm going to whoop them like a stepson. And he took the job, and he hasn't exactly whooped them, but he does have a 4-3-A. And he's made major progress. They've made the stadium larger. They're trying to move the game to a home and away series where they'll have Alabama in Auburn. It's a program 
has not only arrived, but it continues to get better. And he has given Auburn supporters a kind of pride that they did not enjoy during all of the years that Bryant and Alabama was able to dominate them and the great Shug Jordan in the 60s and 70s. There, Bryant, Shug Jordan, their great rivalry lasted 25 years. Both of them made their mark on the history of college football, and there was a majesty to this game when those two men stood on the sidelines. So I know that you and I will never forget. <laughs> we had some great times down on those sidelines. People say how tough that job is, but well, you're down there for all this emotion, the ebb and flow of emotion throughout a ball game, and then seeing the guys suffer through losses and celebrate through wins. And JV got to talk to the Eagle today. <laughs> but the Eagle didn't land on his head, thank heavens. So now the clock ticks away. The Auburn band plays. The Alabama band on the far side is silent. Berger puts his knee down and that'll do it. Seven and four for Alabama. Nine, one and one for Auburn. Christmas. I think little Kevin is ready for a radio control car this year. I can see him now as his Radio Shack off-road wild champ takes to the hills. Or maybe the Malibu 4x4 off-roader. It's got both two or four-wheel drive. Or I could get him that Radio Shack turbo racer. It sure kicks up the dirt. Little Kevin would really like that. Remote radio control toys. $11.95 to $159.95. Only at Radio Shack. Dear Pop, I know how anxious you must be to get this letter, but I think you'll find it was worth the wait. As you can see, he's got your eyes, your smile, even your stubborn chin. So we thought he should also have your name. Say hello to Jonathan Jr. Merry Christmas, Pop. We're coming home. Christmas and Kodak. You take a look again at the final score of today's 52nd meeting between Auburn and Alabama. The Chevrolet most valuable players of the game are Derek Thomas of Alabama and freshman running back Stacy Danley of Auburn. A check in the amount of $1,000 will be donated by Chevrolet to each school's general scholarship fund to further assist qualified students in all chosen academic fields. Let's go down to James Brown. All right, Jim, thank you very much. I'm with Coach Dye, and Coach, you've been given an awful lot of credit for changing from a running game to a passing game, but today it was back to your most comfortable well, running we, game. We ran the ball more tonight, but Alabama did an excellent job of taking away some of our stuff with the passing game, and, and uh, we went back to the running game, and we couldn't have won the football game without it. And, of course, you're back to your second cotton bowl. Make yeah. that sugar bowl. Sugar bowl. Well, we're mighty happy about that, and uh, this has been a... A fun football team to coach, a great group of kids, and uh, we've had a little uh, adversity, uh, uh, a few distractions, but the thing about it, I believe it brought them closer together, and they, they stayed together, and it was a, a great win here tonight, and I'm uh, mighty happy for all the Auburn people and all 
Coach Curry and his staff have done an excellent job. This uh, game here tonight is, uh, they had a great game plan for us and, and deserve a lot of credit. Uh, hard fought game and could have gone either way right down to the end. And final question, Jim Lampley mentioned that it seems like you finally settled down. Now you may be a permanent resident. You bought yourself a thousand acre ranch. Are you in fact settled well, in for good? <laughs> I was hoping when I came to Auburn that I could stay there as long as I was in coaching, and and um, I hope I can. Thank Congratulations Thank on your second trip to the Sugar Bowl. All right, Jim Lampley, let's take it back upstairs to you. Thank you very much, JB. And as we have mentioned several times during the course of the day, tomorrow there's a great doubleheader of college football action here on CBS Sports for a preview of those two games again. James Brown. And the Seminoles and Gators is heating up. Still be a, a big war out there for four quarters, and um, you know that's how it's still be.